On the show today, I'll explain why this Tim McCready Longhorn news isn't that big of a deal. Plus, we'll give away the Dirt Classic tickets and look ahead to all the big dirt racing this weekend. Let's go. It's Thursday, August 24th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. We'll start today off with the news from yesterday that Longhorn Chassis will be dropping Tim McCready as its house car driver for 2024. The release said they'll be, quote, realigning their super late model house car program in 2024 with future plans to soon be announced, unquote. The multi-time and defending Lucas Champion is currently fourth in the standings with a very slight five-point cushion for that final locked-in chase spot. So far on the season, McCready has been to victory lane five times, including twice during the Dirt Car sanctioned portion of Dirt Car Nationals. He won a prelim feature during the Dream at Eldora, and he has split field to prelim Lucas wins at Lernerville during the Firecracker weekend and at Muskegon County. Hasn't been a bad season for T-Mac and the Paler Motorsports 39, but they are off the pace from where they were in 2021 and 2022 when they won the Lucas Championships. Their win percentage and top five and top 10 percentages are down just a little bit, and their average finish is down about a spot and a half from last year. Even with the little bit of a drop, though, they are still very much in the mix for the championship as long as they stay in that top four when the Dirt Track World Championship comes around. Looking at his total career, McCready isn't a guy who's going to go out and win 25 times a year in a super late model. His championships were built on consistency, and he's not going to tear anything up. It doesn't get the attention that Jonathan Davenport got last year or what Ricky Thorne Jr. and Bobby Pierce are getting this year. He just goes about his business quietly and effectively. Back to this announcement from Longhorn, it's really much ado about nothing. I saw plenty of comments yesterday on social media and message boards about who the new driver could be, uh, someone bringing bags of money to be the next guy, and what Paler will do now. But really, it appears as though a bunch of folks just didn't understand the announcement and don't understand how Longhorn's house car deal actually works. Next year, McCready will still be driving the same Paler Motorsports 39 he's driving at this moment. The team has said as much. They will still utilize Longhorn Chassis, still be getting support from Longhorn, and their plan is to be back full-time with Lucas, so nobody is losing their ride here. Unlike, say, a rocket chassis that fields its own house car program literally out of their own building and owned by and worked on by the same people, Longhorn doesn't operate Paler Motorsports. Paler has been running their cars out of a building in the same complex as Longhorn here in China Grove, North Carolina, but it is an independent team that was just very closely aligned with the chassis builder. Going forward, the 39 probably won't be the, you know, the first team to get the absolute latest and greatest parts and pieces to come out of Longhorn. McCready probably won't be a part of as many sanctioned Longhorn tests, but outside of some words in our press release, I doubt many fans will even notice a difference here. Uh, as for who will be called the new house car, there are, I think, plenty of options. And, you know, everybody has talked about these. It's I don't think it's hard to, you know, figure out who could pen- uh, potentially be. Ricky Thornton Jr., Bobby Pierce, Jonathan Davenport, Brandon Shepard, all high-profile Longhorn drivers who could get the nod. I think there are also some young, uh, interesting possibilities, guys who could potentially be on that list. Uh, you know, talking about guys like Devin Moran, Nick Hoffman. And according to Longhorn, we should know for sure in the coming weeks. But as a friend told me yesterday, this was a bunch of folks making a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, Before we move on, let's announce a winner of the Dirt Classic tickets from yesterday's show. These are coming courtesy of Lincoln Speedway. And don't forget, you can get your reserved seats at dirtclassic.com. Use code DIRTTRACKER at checkout to get $5 off. The winner of the two reserved seats is Cliff Adams. Please send me an email at info at dirttracker.com and we will get you hooked up. Thanks to everybody who participated and to the Dirt Classic for allowing us to do this. Uh, let's talk about some of the racing coming up over the next few days. We'll start first with the Lucas Oil Lay Model Dirt Series. They're at Georgetown Speedway tonight for 18,000 win. We talked yesterday about how Matt Shepard will be in attendance to make his series debut along with NASCAR Cup driver Ross Chastain, so there may be a few extra eyes on this one. This will be the first ever stop for Lucas at Georgetown. Friday and Saturday, the series moves over then to Port Royal for the Rumble by the River. That one is 50,000 a win, and this week uh, this weekend will lock in the final eight in the Lucas chase. Dalton Wilson and Max Blair have those last two spots in 7th and 8th. Earl Pearson Jr., Tyler Erb are trying to get in. They are 9th and 10th. There is a $1,500 bonus available for those guys. But outside of that, this weekend's cutoff is kind of a non-story. None of these guys has a chance to catch up to the top four uh, as Wilson in 7th trails Devin Moran in 6th by 415 points. So he's not even going to get to 6th. 
Uh, Friday at Port Royal will be a split field night with drivers earning points to set up Saturday's action. EPJ is the defending Rumble by the River event winner. I think he could use a good weekend. Just two top five runs all season. All three of these nights will be live over on Flow Racing. And across the country in Iowa, the Award of Outlaws lay models are at Davenport for the Quad Cities 150. 10,000 to win shows tonight and tomorrow. And then Saturday pays 30 grand to the winner. Tanner English won the big show at Davenport a year ago. He actually also won one of the prelim nights. Uh, Brandon Shepard has had success there uh, in uh, recent seasons as well. Bobby Pierce continues to control the championship. This could be a good weekend to extend that 108 po uh, point lead over Chris Madden. Uh, he's had plenty of good runs at Davenport in the past. And I think, too, looking down through the standings, a lot of movement is still possible here. Second through seventh in the outlaw points is separated by now, uh, right now by less than 100 points. So there's going to be a lot of shuffling here down uh, towards the end of the season. All three nights at Davenport will also include the Extreme Outlaw Midgets. Uh, Kenan McIntosh, Jade Avedisian locked in a tight championship battle on that side. All of this racing will be live this weekend over on Dirt Vision. And on the sprint car side of things, the World of Outlaws will begin their trek west following this weekend in North Dakota. They take on River Cities on Friday and Red River Valley on Saturday. And then next week is out to Skagit to begin that West Coast Swing. Tough weekend at Jackson for David Gravel allowed Brad Sweet to stretch his legs in the title fight, and he's now 50 points clear of Carson Macedo in second and 60 clear of Gravel, who has fallen to third. It's about 25 feature positions over the 41 and 30 over the two car. Gravel did win at River Cities earlier this season, but Sweet won this August show a year ago. And just to round this out, Macedo is the defending Red River Valley winner. Uh, we'll see several of the NOSA regulars this weekend uh, up, uh, coming up against the Outlaws. Names like Mark Dobmeyer, Austin Pierce, Brendan Mullen, a lot of those guys. And I'll be curious to see if Tanner Holmes can continue the pace he had last weekend at Jackson in his debut with Shark Racing. I think carrying some momentum out west to his home area could be a really big boost. Uh, these races will be live on Dirt Vision as well. Up in Michigan, the dogfight between Tyler Courtney and Zeb Wise for the All-Star Championship will continue with stops at Tri-City and Butler. Just 10 points separate the two teams right now in the owner standings. We talked earlier this week about Zeb using the Ford Power at Sealands Grove last Sunday to score the win, and we'll have to see how Rudine manages their engine program going forward. Talking to some folks this week, it sounds like they could still rely heavily on their Speedway engines here down the stretch and maybe pick and choose places to use the Ford Power. If you're a non-wing fan, the big SmackDown weekend at Kokomo is here uh, with big money on the line on Saturday. The USAC Sprint Car competitors will race for six grand tonight and tomorrow, and then $30,000 goes to the winner on Saturday. As an added bonus, though, drivers will earn $500 for every lap led during that finale, so the winner could potentially walk out of Kokomo with 50 grand. A recent Kokomo winners include CJ Leary, Kyle Cummins, Kevin Thomas Jr., and Justin Grant. And things are still wide open in the points for USAC as well as the top five drivers in the standings separated by just 99 points at the moment both the all-stars and usac are live on flow racing if you cannot get to those races other racing to check out over the next few days includes the ascs national tour at lakeside and salina jason martin leads the ascs championship right now the hunt the front super dirt series is at needmore and sonoya for a pair of 5,000 to win shows and the iron man series heads to lake cumberland on saturday for 15 grand to win uh, that's it for the daily this week. A uh, big thanks to all of you who continue to tune in. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the dirt racing weekend out there. We'll see you right back here on Sunday.